Hello everyone and welcome back to another session of AP Human Geography with Mr. Elrod. We're continuing on with our conversation about population theorists. Our next population theorist is, uh, is, a, is a woman by the name of Esther Bozrup. She is a Danish economist and um, she's also studied agriculture and development and works for the United Nations. Um, so whereas we had our earlier uh, theorist, uh, Thomas Malthus and Karl Marx, Esther Bozrup was living uh, during the middle to late 1900s um, and she really she takes a different angle uh, at population and population growth than uh, a lot of those even some of those today who are really concerned about population growth and when she looks at population and population growth uh, she sees larger populations not necessarily as a bad thing but also but really every individual as is positive is adding something to uh, to the world and society, society and things like that instead of looking at uh, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. So moving on. Um, so this idea that larger populations, because of the strain, really are going to force some sort of innovation. People are going to have to figure out a way in order to provide for larger populations. And we just and it seems to happen time after time, especially since the Industrial Revolution, the Agricultural Revolution, that, and even prior to that, we've been able to figure out ways where we can provide for more people. And so that just seems to be a trend that we've, we've gone on. And, and we do that a lot through different types of technological development, whether it was the green revolution or it is today with the bio revolution, uh, we've been able to develop technologies um, to provide for more people in less space. Even if you look at the ways that we're able to uh, get things like more drinking water, we have sanitation systems uh, for recycling water, you know, we have systems where uh, if we look at our aircraft carriers, the United States that go around the world, they're actually able to pull in seawater and then convert that into fresh drinking water. Um, and so we have systems that, that are able to actually recruit, recoup some natural resources and, and provide for those populations even though they might be growing. And that's her whole, that's her whole argument is that um, people are not necessarily uh, just a mouth to feed or a liability. Instead, people are an asset to society because the more people you have, the more potential you have for problem solvers or people who are going to innovate, things like that. If you if you have more people around, then the potential for you to uh, find find an Einstein or uh, find somebody who can, uh, you know, crack certain codes of, of genetics and and figure out ways that uh, we can um, we can uh, create different types of uh, plants or better varieties of plants or ways that we can uh, artificially create uh, habitats and things to to grow to grow food or provide water for people then uh, then that of course is a positive thing for society and so that's not necessarily larger populations are not necessarily negative and so it's this idea of human capital uh, that people are actually assets to society and not simply liabilities so Esther Bozrup doesn't necessarily uh, is not does not necessarily call for po uh, curbing population growth and the last group we'll talk about are what are called the Neo-Malthusians Neo-Malthusians from the term obviously you can see is there's people who are proponents in our modern day uh, who are proponents of Malthus's concerns and theories that um, we are we are potentially going to outpace ourselves in terms of our ability to provide for the world's population uh, and they are very much concerned with our use of natural resources uh, the the very intensive way that we use some landscapes even in the United States our use of fossil fuels water resources right now there's a big drought out in California which is creating a lot of issues with their agricultural production uh, and so uh, you know the potential to uh, to do harm to our world because of the large populations um, but when they look at the world they, they view things a little bit differently they do acknowledge the technological innovations that we've been able to develop to provide for the world, but then they look at the poorer regions of the world. Uh, specifically, you look at places in Africa, you look at places in in Asia, and really, uh, you know, what's been sustaining these people is uh, is really the generosity of a lot of uh, other countries in the world. Whether they are either giving them or selling them technology or providing them with food aid and things like this, which is which sustains their populations. Um, and so if you look at them, they're not a actually able to sustain themselves. And so that for them is, is a major concern um, because it's not – the Western nations themselves seem to be – and, and others uh, as well, uh, China, India, places like that, uh, currently are able to take care of themselves. But you have these other places in the world, uh, again, predominantly places in, in, on the continent of Africa, 
that are not able to take care of themselves. And so if you look at the characteristics of the regions, there's there's a definite strain on the resources, um, the natural resources, the ability to, to provide for the people. Uh, and then, uh, like we said with, with Malthus, he was, a, he was a staunch Catholic, and so he would not... He was not a proponent of the use of contraceptions. Uh, so the Neo-Malthusians are a little bit looser on that, uh, and they think that the use and the provision of, of contraceptions and things like that would actually be positive to help those parts of the world that need to uh, to curb their population growth. So that's the, end, uh, that's the end of our population theories and theorists that we have. Uh, again, this is an argument that continues... Um, as, the, as the world population begins to grow, of course, uh, we believe that the world population will hit about 9 billion and then potentially uh, begin to decline after that. Uh, but we'll just have to see kind of what the future holds and how, uh, and how things are going to go. Of course, again, this is going to be an argument that people continue to have uh, over time. And we'll just have to kind of see how it pans out.